Well, communication, that's key to so many things, but are we good communicators? Are we good listeners? And we're going to talk more about that. Father Ross is with us today to tell us about what he's learned from it. You, you've read the book, but this was just a little portion of the book in an article. This is an excerpt, yeah. Remember when you were a child? We used to yes. take these little cups, huh? That's got to stretch it. So you go on out to go Rice over Avenue. Here. Go over to Rice Avenue. No, no, that's okay. <laughs> no, but my brother and I used to do this in between our rooms. I did too. Yeah. I did too. It was well, a anyway, fun thing. This is a very interesting article by Charles Duhigg. And um, I enjoyed it because it talks about communication, super communi communicators. Of course, as you know, I'm in that business too. <laughs> so his, his notion was that effective communication is, first of all, an art. It's not something you can learn, it. it's a skill you can learn. But super communicators are people who know how to say exactly the right thing at the right time. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes people put their foot in their mouth like I do all the time, you know? <laughs> so, for example, um, these people could be your friends or your colleagues. And after you come home, you want to talk to them about your tough day or to your spouse or something like that. So there's three kinds of conversations that people have. Practical, emotional, and social conversations. And each one of those kind of conversations uses a different part of our brains. As a matter of fact, um, matching our conversations can transform how you and I communicate with each other. So here's what he's, he's, he says is going to be beneficial. There are four skills that super communicators have. The first is this, to ask deep questions. I think we've done this before. When you first meet people, what's mm -hmm. the first question you ask somebody? How you doing or what's your job or most, you know, what most are you doing people, here? The first question you ask somebody is what's your name? The first okay, time you meet them. that's true too. And then the second question people normally ask is what do you do? Mm -hmm. Do you ever wonder why we say what do you do? I mean, it's just because this is the way we, we, we judge each other by what they do. So if you say, well, you know, I'm a broadcaster for WLIO, they go, oh, my golly, I'm so envious. And if, I would, if you were to say, well, you know, I happen to be a doctor, they'd say, oh, really? You know, so, no, no, they don't do that. But people judge us by that. But mm -hmm. he says asking deeper questions are going to be beneficial. So, for example, instead of saying, what do you do? Have them talk about their values. What led you to be a broadcaster, Holly? Mm -hmm. Why did you decide to come to LIO? And things of that nature. And he says that's the entree into a good conversation. Then the next thing is to prove that you're listening. Now, I've done marriage counseling for quite a number of years. And here's what I've observed. Oftentimes, I tell, people, tell couples, each week, you've got to take your spouse on a date. You don't have to go to a movie theater. You don't have to go to a... In fact, I say go to Bristol Lake and sit in the car. And the first question you ask your spouse, the fella has to ask his wife, what are you, what are you feeling? Not how do you feel, because there's a big difference. Because when you say, what do you feel? You're trying to get into the person's heart and the mind. And men are from Mars, women are from Venus. And here's what happens. <laughs> Let's say, for, the wife, for example, the wife wants to start talking about the fact that she's upset about something. The man, within 10 seconds, will stop it and say, you've got to do this, 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 this. And he's not listening. No. Now, the woman knows exactly the answer. She just needs somebody to listen. Mm -hmm. And in fact, if you stop, if, if we men just stop the woman from talking, the woman says, what am I, chopped liver? You don't think I know anything about it. He says that to himself. And communication will stop. So prove that you're listening to somebody. He's called looping. Ask yourself. Ask the other person, do you hear what I'm saying? Do you hear what I'm uh, hearing? Here's what I'm hearing. Thirdly, determine what everybody wants. We often start a conversation trying to influence uh, and convince the other person of our position. Mm -hmm. Instead of doing that, determine what everybody wants. And finally, pay attention to more than words. Body language, vocal inflections, things like that. This is why I tell my staff I am not in favor of texting me or oh. emailing me unless, mm -hmm. unless it's the time or date. Because if it can be misunderstood, it will be misunderstood. Right. And we you get different tones from oh, a text, and they didn't it, even maybe mean that tone. And no, and so people say, well, why did you mean that? And I say, I didn't say anything at all like that. <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah. So th those are all very important skills, I think, that we can learn that we can learn. Right, yeah, and I think you do have to work at it some. I mean, that's kind of what the article said too, you know. Be aware, like you made those points, you, communicating is not as easy as you might want to think oh, it is. Oh, indeed <laughs> it is. Yeah, thank you, Father, for coming thank today. You. All right, don't go away. New Edition continues in a moment.